matter around us. Introduction As we look around, we can see that most of the matter around us exists as mixture of two or more pure components, for example, sea water, minerals, soil, etc., are all mixtures. Mixtures are constituted by more than one kind of pure form of matter, known as substance. Solution A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. We come across various types of solutions in our daily life. Lemonade, soda water, etc. are all examples of solutions. We think of a solution as a liquid or a gas dissolved in it. But we can also have solid solution, say alloys, and gaseous solution, say air. A solution has a solvent and a solute as its components. The component of the solution that dissolves the other component in it is called the solvent. The component of the solution that is dissolved in the solvent is called the solute. Colloidal Solution Stir a small quantity of blue ink with a large quantity of water. The solution turns blue. Leave it aside without disturbing it. After some time, there is a deposit with a clear solution on top. Try filtering the solution. There is no residue left. Send a beam of light from a torch light through the solution. The path of the beam is seen in the solution. Ink is an example of a colloidal solution. The size of the solute particles is bigger than that in the true solution and hence it settles after some time. The solute, however, cannot be filtered by ordinary filter paper. The colloidal solution shows a property called Tyndall effect. The Tyndall effect is the scattering of light by colloidal particles. This accounts for the beam of light being visible in the ink solution. Types of colloids are shown in the table. Types of colloids Tyndall effect Tyndall effect can be observed when sunlight passes through the canopy of a dense forest. In the forest, mist contains tiny droplets of water, which acts as particles of colloid dispersed in air. Properties of colloids A colloid is a heterogeneous mixture. The size of particles of a colloid is too small to be individually seen by naked eyes. Colloids are big enough to scatter a beam of light passing through it and make its path visible. They do not settle down when left undisturbed. That is, a colloid is quite stable. Obtaining colored component. Fill half a beaker with water. Put a watch glass on the mouth of the beaker. Put few drops of ink on the watch glass. Now, start heating the beaker. We do not want to heat the ink directly. You will see that the evaporation is taking place from the watch glass. Observe carefully and record your observations. We find that it is a mixture of a dye in water. Thus, we can separate the volatile component, that is, the solvent, from its non-volatile solute by the method of evaporation. Separating components Take some full cream milk in a vessel. Centrifuge it by using a centrifuging machine for two minutes. What do you observe on churning the milk? Explain how the separation of cream from milk takes place. The principle is that the denser particles are forced to the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top when spun rapidly. Immiscible liquid separation Let us try to separate kerosene oil from water using a separating funnel. Pour the mixture of kerosene oil and water in a separating funnel. Let it stand undisturbed for some time so that separate layers of oil and water are formed. Open the stopcock of the separating funnel and pour out the lower layer of water carefully. Close the stopcock of the separating funnel as the oil reaches the stopcock. 
The principle is that immiscible liquids separate out in layers depending on their densities. Separation of two miscible liquids. Let us try to separate acetone and water from their mixture. Take the mixture in a distillation flask. Fit it with a thermometer. Arrange the apparatus as shown in figure. Heat the mixture slowly, keeping a close watch at the thermometer. The acetone vaporizes, condenses in the condenser outlet. Water is left behind in the distillation flask. This method illustrates the separation of two miscible liquids by distillation. Fractional Distillation To separate a mixture of two or more miscible liquids for which the difference in boiling points is less than 25 K, fractional distillation process is used. For example, for the separation of different gases from air, different fraction for petroleum products, etc. The apparatus is similar to that for simple distillation, except that a fractionating column is fitted in between the distillation flask and the condenser. A simple fractionating column is a tube packed with glass beads. The beads provide surface for the vapors to cool and condense repeatedly as shown in figure. Water Purification In cities, drinking water is supplied from waterworks. A flow diagram of a typical waterworks is shown. From this figure, the various processes involved in the purification of water is visibly inferred. Different Gases from Air Air is a homogeneous mixture and can be separated into its components by fractional distillation. The flow diagram shows the steps of the process. If we want oxygen gas from air, we have to separate out all the other gases present in the air. The air is compressed by increasing the pressure and is then cooled by decreasing the temperature to get liquid air. The liquid air is allowed to warm up slowly in a fractional distillation column where gases get separated at different heights depending upon their boiling points. Physical and Chemical Changes The interconversion of states is a physical change because these changes occur without a change in composition and no change in the chemical nature of the substance. Both water and cooking oil are liquids but their chemical characteristics are different. They differ in odor and inflammability. We know that oil burns in air, whereas water extinguishes fire. It is this chemical property of oil that makes it different from water. Burning is a chemical change. During this process, one substance reacts with another to undergo a change in chemical composition. A chemical change brings change in the chemical properties of matter and we get new substances. A chemical change is also called a chemical reaction. Element Elements can be normally divided into metals, non-metals and metalloids. Metals usually show some or all of the following properties. They have a luster, shine. They have silvery grey or golden yellow colour. They conduct heat and electricity. They are ductile, that is, can be drawn into wires. They are malleable, that is, can be hammered into thin sheets. They are sonars, make a ringing sound when hit. Examples of metals are gold, silver, copper, iron, sodium, potassium, etc. Mercury is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. Non-metals usually show some or all of the following properties. They display a variety of colors. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They are lustrous, sonorous, or malleable. Examples of non-metals are hydrogen, oxygen, iodine, carbon, coal coke, bromine, chlorine, etc. Compounds a compound is a substance composed of two or more elements chemically combined with one another in a fixed proportion. Difference between mixtures and compounds. 
mixtures. Elements or compounds just mix together to form a mixture and no new compound is formed. Compounds Elements react to form new compounds. A mixture has a variable composition. The composition of each new substance is always fixed. A mixture shows the properties of the constituent substance. The new substance has totally different properties. The constituents can be separated fairly easily by physical methods. The constituents can be separated only by chemical or electrochemical reaction.